is a common little repair that we get. It's a common little bit of damage that you're going to get on your own car as well. Instead of taking the wheel to a specialist place and getting it diamond cut and paying the costs involved, we're just going to do a little blowing on it. It's not perfect, but customers are happy with it. And it means you ain't got to have your whole wheel cut, which you can only do a certain amount of times anyway. Just mask off any of these edges and that so we don't catch them, because we don't want to be making any more work than what we have to. Mini sander, 180 disc. I'm just going to remove this damage. 320. We're just going to go over it again. Four hundred over it again. Six hundred wet and dry. Wet the sanding paper. Just remember to keep it as small and as localised as you can. I'm just smoothing out that finish. I've just took it off head cam to get a close up. Now, the problem you've got is the bare alloy that you've exposed looks different to the polished face and it because it's, there's layers there now there's actually an edge so there's a little trick to basically hide this okay we're just going to scotch the area and we're only going to be going a little bit further than the bit we've sanded back it's up to you how far you go with this but we're trying to do a very small local repair so we'll keep it minimal Keep it tidy. We are going to be blowing a little bit of silver paint here, so just bear that in mind. Try and stay off these large spokes if you can. So I've masked off this tyre. I always do that before I pan or wipe it, which we're going to do now, because if you're going to get any contaminants, it's going to be off the tyre with all the silicons and tyre gels it's had on it. So I always recommend masking that off first. And then we're just going to give it a bit of a pan of wipe to clean it up. It's just a fast pan of wipe. There we go. Okay, so I've masked all this up now, as you can see. This is probably the hardest part of the repair because you've got to be quite intricate with your masking tape. There are special masking tapes out there, but I've just used one inch tape, which I prefer to the two inch tape because it's more manageable, especially around these corners and that you can move it a bit better. So uh, you can see that. I've also back masked here, look, just little gaps, just where the paint's just gonna flick into there. And I've obviously covered this in all that because the overspray. So I think we're having some paint. Okay, so I've just got my uh, mini gun out, and if you can see in there, I've just got some silver paint. I think it's just moon dust silver. It's just whatever I keep on the van. Really, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a proper silver. And what we're going to do, we're just going to blow in this edge just very finely with the little gun, uh, just to try and hide this layer. That we've created so uh, best thing to do turn that right down the fan so it's and then with that you need the pressure down as well so it needs to be like that rather than turn the fan back up that so it's almost a pistol okay so we're just going to dust 
tiniest amount on there. Blow it, dry it. Remember, we're just trying to hide that edge. We're not bollocking loads of product on there. Blow it off. Okay, that looks fine. Like I say, we don't want to be putting too much product on there because we're going to build up a, a layer of base coat on this edge, what we don't want. So I think that's about enough, we've just about hidden it. After leaving that to dry for about 10 minutes, uh, I've just mixed up some 2K lacquer, which I've got in another minigun. Uh, if we just turn the fan right down again, turn the pressure right down, tester. Okay, we're ready to put a bit of lacquer on it. Right, so I'm going to give this a coat of lacquer. I'm just going to give it a little bit there first, where I put the base coat, but then I'm going to immediately go straight over it, up to these bits here where I've left these little tunnels. Looking pretty good. I've actually got a dedicated fade out gun which is handy for this this isn't detrimental that you do this but I like to just, just do a little fade out in these tunnels lift them up a little bit The other thing to remember is we need to get this tape off pretty quick, especially where the base coat's been applied. We don't want the lacquer drying and creating a, a rough edge, so just so peeling that off lot. So we've got to be really careful at this point that we don't disturb the lacquer we've just put on. Okay, so I've took the masking tape off, I've took the head cam off, just so can get right up close. It's not perfect, but it's a good repair. It's quick, it's easy to do, customers are always happy with it. I'd be happy with it if I'd done it to my own car. And I've seen them after a few months, they hold up as well, so. Right, I'm just gonna dry it now for 20 minutes in the heat lamp, and then we'll have another look. So that's been drying about half an hour. Just remember to always dry the alloys a bit more than what you would a bumper corner, because it takes the alloy, that's about, that's about right, it takes the alloy longer to heat up. So that's just something to be aware of before you polish it up and go and ruin your repair. I'm just going to polish these little blend marks here now as a final step. Okay, so that's all done. Back on the car. I've left it up here in full view of the customer. I've not hid it at the bottom because I'm confident that it's a nice little repair. I've never had a problem before with them. 
and I've done it probably less than half the price of having it diamond cut while the customer's at home so it's a, a winner for everybody and it's probably only took me 40 minutes if that 